We all know that Apple has already announced that their new ARM Silicon Macs are coming later this year, and that within two years, they're ditching Intel processors for good. But we just got a new piece of news that is an even bigger deal. Apple is also ditching AMD graphics cards, just like they did to Nvidia last year, and they're moving forward exclusively with their own custom GPUs. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I know they're doing this, I'm gonna talk about what else they're planning on doing, I'm gonna discuss why they're doing it, and I'm gonna let you know what this ultimately means for you and your purchasing decisions. But before we get into it, we just got our new premium version of our classic Apple product pattern t-shirt, and this one is incredibly soft and comfortable for just $4 more than our classic shirt. So definitely check it out in our merch shelf right below this video. Back to the Mac, Apple has a new support document for developers which shows off the difference between their Apple Silicon Macs and Intel-based Macs. On the Intel side, it shows support for Intel, Nvidia, and AMD GPUs. And if you're wondering why it says Nvidia, well, there used to be Macs with Nvidia graphics cards. The last one was the 2014 15-inch MacBook Pro. So this basically shows that the chart is talking about all previous Macs in general, which is a very important detail to notice because if we go back to the chart on the Apple Silicon side, it simply says Apple GPU. We'll discuss why they would do this and what this means in just a minute. But first, let's go through the other interesting parts of the chart. It shows that the GPU architecture on Apple Silicon Macs will use tile-based deferred rendering, which is what they currently use on iPhone phones and iPads. To sum it up, TBDR significantly reduces system memory bandwidth requirements, which in turn increases performance and reduces power requirements. So basically, you get better performance with lower memory bandwidth, and it uses less power, so that means less heat and ultimately better battery life. It's basically a win-win in every aspect of the GPU. And in terms of Metal API support, the chart shows that it supports two APIs, Mac 2 and Apple. This basically means that Apple Silicon Macs will support both macOS and iOS apps natively, since they're both using Apple's Metal architecture. Apple also showed off the transition process in another slide, showing off how developers will transition to fully optimizing their apps for Apple GPUs over the next two years when Apple reveals their first GPUs. Now, I don't know if you remember, but Apple dropped support for Nvidia graphics cards last year, and now it all makes sense why they would do that. Their master plan was to eventually have developers optimize their apps for custom Apple Silicon graphics chips, so they forced AMD and Nvidia to support their Metal architecture so that developers could switch their apps over to using Metal. Of course, Nvidia refused to do so, so Apple ultimately dropped them. But AMD agreed, and they've been supporting Metal for years now, which means that it's already much easier for developers to transition their apps over to Apple Silicon chips, which run using Metal. So with all of that said, you probably have a lot of questions. So let's start with why Apple would want to completely ditch AMD and Intel graphics. First off, it's going to be a lot cheaper for Apple since they currently have to pay Intel and AMD for every chip they use, but they also created a slide with four different reasons. So let's start with the first one, faster. Apple believes that their own graphics chips in the future will be faster than the AMD graphics chips that they're currently using. Now, I don't know how long that'll take, but if you take a look at the graphics performance of Apple's iPad Pro, it's nearing 10,000 points in Geekbench 5's metal test. And that's a tiny chip in a very thin iPad Pro with no active cooling at all. Apple's base 16-inch MacBook Pro comes with a much larger dedicated 5300M graphics chip which scores around 24,000 points with active fan cooling. So if Apple was to scale that tiny iPad chip up and give it active cooling, it could easily outperform the current AMD options. The second reason on the chart is power efficiency. It's estimated that the iPad Pro chip has a TDP of between 7 and 10 watts, and that's the entire chip, including the processing side, compared to 50 watts on the 5300M for just graphics rendering. That is extremely efficient, meaning way less power being used, 
way less heat output, and less fan noise. This is huge news for Apple since their 16 inch MacBook Pro is already hitting their 100 watt total TDP limit to ensure that users get the full performance when unplugged. So Apple is currently hitting a performance wall in terms of power usage, and switching to their own efficient ARM chips will give them a ton of room to grow. This basically means that in the worst case scenario, Apple could easily make a 50 watt TDP graphics chip and get five times more performance than the current A12Z chip, therefore doubling the performance of the AMD 5300M once everything is optimized. And that's not even considering that Apple's Silicon GPUs will be a completely new family of chips made using the new 5 nanometer process instead of the current 7 nanometer process that the A12Z is built on. The third reason is new metal features for macOS. This basically means that they can continue to improve the features of macOS while staying very efficient, which they've already started to show off at WWDC, like the new Messages app, which is much more functional than before. The fourth reason is alignment with iOS, iPadOS, and tvOS. Basically, switching Mac over to Apple Silicon is going to make it a whole lot easier for Apple to develop and update their own apps. Instead of having to work on iOS and macOS apps separately, they can do it once and make some minor adjustments for each platform. This also means less work for third-party developers who no longer have to make two different apps if they want it on both iPhone and Mac. Now out of all of those reasons, I think the most important one is that Apple will no longer be held back by Intel and AMD's product release timeline. So we'll no longer see a new MacBook Pro with basically the same graphics or processor as last year's model. Apple will finally be able to consistently give us a processor and graphics improvement every single year, just like they do with the iPhone. Now another big question is if Apple is going to start making dedicated graphics chips or stick to the ones that are integrated into the processor like they currently are doing with iOS devices. Well, if Apple is switching to ARM and ditching both Intel processors and AMD graphics, they're going to do it everywhere, including the Mac Pro. And the Mac Pro needs to have incredibly powerful graphics performance, and to do this, they'll most likely have to separate the graphics from the ARM processor, so we should expect Apple to make some form of dedicated graphics chips. Now whether they'll be removable is another question, but this ultimately means that they could also separate the ARM chips in the MacBook Pro for example, to have a high powered dedicated graphics chip. So with all of that said, let's get to the final point. What does all of this mean for you? Well, if you want your third party apps to work great, you should probably wait to upgrade to an Apple Silicon Arm Mac until your apps are finally proven to be fully optimized for Apple's GPUs. This might take two or three or even more years, depending on how actively your developer of your much needed app upgrades and optimizes it for new technology. So in that case, it might be a good idea to buy an Intel based Mac right now, like the 16 inch MacBook Pro on sale using the link below and enjoy optimized AMD graphics performance for the next couple of years before you finally buy an ARM based Mac. Now what this also means is that eGPU support is most likely going away on Apple Silicon Macs, or at least eGPUs with AMD graphics. Apple will probably create their own custom Apple eGPU in the future, but if you like the idea of using an eGPU for gaming on Windows 10 through Boot Camp, absolutely do not upgrade to an ARM based Mac later this year. Stick with an Intel based system like the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which performs very well when connected to an eGPU. But eventually, you're gonna have to switch over to an Apple Silicon Mac, and hopefully by then, more game developers will be encouraged to bring some really great games over to the macOS platform. And in general, the switch to Apple GPUs means that your future MacBook or iMac or any Mac is gonna be more powerful thanks to metal optimization while running a lot cooler and quieter. And don't forget the better battery life. 
So while this might seem a little disappointing right now, everyone is gonna win in the end. If you disagree with my point of view, go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below. And if you learned something new from this video, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe right now. And be sure to check out our Apple product pattern merch right below this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.